Yo, what's up guys? It's your boy Maurice here. We are back today for another video and bro in this video I wanted to continue doing my little, you know, Dragon Ball commentary videos now I know usually I don't make videos like this, you know uh, My last video on um, a future Gohan was like this But I don't usually make videos like this often and I wanted to change that I actually want to make videos like this all the time now so along with these style of videos I will also be putting out my usual style of videos where like I talk about fights and shit, right? But today, today I wanted to talk about something that I hold near and dear to my heart. I want to talk about the Namek Saga. Now, the reason that I hold the Namek Saga near and dear to my heart is because I just feel that it is literally peak Dragon Ball. Like seriously, bro, there is a reason that this arc is held in such high regards amongst the fandom, bro. This arc right here really showcased just how well the author can write his story and damn bro he wrote one hell of a story with namek how about i talk about the reasons why i think namek is the best saga in dragon ball let's get to it now for those of you who may recall i made a video a while back talking about me ranking my favorite arcs in dragon ball so like you know i ranked the saiyan saga through the majin buu saga from worst to best in my opinion and I actually talked about Namek and why I think it's the best arc in that video too, but I did not go as in depth as I'm going to go in now. And right now I'm actually going to give you a full breakdown as to why I feel Namek was peak Dragon Ball. Now without further ado, let's hop right into the video. Alright, so when we talk about why Namek is so good, we really have to take it back a little before Namek happened, alright? now. We're going to be talking about the Saiyan Saga for a little bit. Now, I know what you might be thinking, bro, why the fuck are we talking about the Saiyan Saga? Let me cook, alright? Now, during the Saiyan Saga, this is where Vegeta actually mentions Na Namek for the first ever time. That is our first ever mention of anything about Namek or, you know, Namekians and all that. It was Vegeta who started that. And that's why, obviously, that's why he's the GOAT, right? But, dude, it was Vegeta who started that shit and someone else overheard him talking about it so you know after after you know the events of the Saiyan saga that's when krillin tells bulma hey how about we go to namek right because they have their own dragon balls and we can just wish everybody back there and that's that's how it starts bro like honestly do i love when shit is mentioned long 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 before it happens i love that and then when they finally get to Namek, it's not what you might think. And I mean that in the way that you might think that, you know, oh, well, they might, you know, touch land and then they're going to fight some new people. Hell no, bro. Because on Namek at this time, most people were so powerful that if, you know, go on in them, even tried to fight them for even 0 0.5 seconds, it was GG's for them, right? So, bro. The first half of this arc was just them running and hiding and not fighting at all because if they did fight, like I said, it was not going to end well for them. And so, you know, I just like how the first half of this arc is just hide and seek, bro. That is literally what it is. Just hide and seek for the first half of this arc. Now, you might think that's kind of boring to watch, but bro, I promise you when you actually watch it. It is the best storytelling ever because it kind of changes up the way Dragon Ball works because usually they would find someone strong and they would fight them, right? But not not here, bro. These guys are just so much more powerful than them that fighting them is literally off the table, right? And we get to see our first instance of this when Gohan and Krillin are overlooking Frieza and his men pretty much pressing all of the Namekians. Now, when they see this happen, they see that Frieza's men are just on a whole other level, bro. They, bro, they pretty much one-shotted these guys, right? So, <laughs> you know, them seeing this, they're like, um, how about we not fight these guys? How about, how about we get the fuck out of here before, be before they see us? And then that's when Dodoria sees them and he's like, man, I see you niggas, don't even try to run. And so this, this, this causes our first ever chase on Namek and this is, is going to be a very common theme throughout this arc running away from whatever villain is chasing them and then we fast forward a little bit to when the ginyu force is on their way now 
Keep in mind, before this, they were not trying to fight anybody. But now that they know that these guys are coming and they know that they are pretty much like the fucking, you know, Power Rangers, they are scared shitless. And so they have no choice but to fight these guys. And this is another aspect of this arc that I like. It's them fighting people that they know that they can't win against, but they still fight them because they have no choice and they don't want to just, you know, back down. So. You know, it's either fight or die, and they chose to fight, right? And that's one thing I like about this arc. And, bro, when they finally touched down on Namek, dude, it was like the fucking Royal Rumble out this bitch. Because, dude, we were just introduced to five more characters who are more powerful than Zarbon and Dodoria combined, bro. Dude, each of these guys, except for Goldo, can one-shot both Zarbon and D Dodoria at the same time, bro. So now, so now they have to take on four members of this five-person team who can literally one-shot them if they wanted to that is crazy bro and that is just one thing i like about this arc it is dude it is quite literally them trying to win without power because they don't have the power to win so they have to find other ways to win right and this right here is actually the moment we get to see that vegeta wasn't just all talk like dude he was down for the fade you know like dude Trust me, he was frightened for his life. This dude was probably shitting bricks. But one thing about it is he did not back down, bro. Dude, this, bro, this dude, Raccoon, literally looked at him and, and he's like, bro, you are done. I am literally about to fodderize you so bad, you don't even fucking realize it. And then Vegeta just looks at him like, damn, that's crazy, but I didn't ask. And then, bro, they start fighting. And it's like the whole time Vegeta is just trying to do anything to him and you know it is literally doing nothing to raccoon like this dude literally gets back up from everything vegeta throws at him everything now look bro we can sit here and make fun of vegeta all day for pretty much taking an l in this fight which i already kind of did in my video that i made about this please go check that out but bro literally we, bro, we can make fun of him all day. One thing we're not going to say is Vegeta did not stand on business. He, bro, this entire arc was just Vegeta standing on business, bro. He was that guy during this arc until Goku came, right? But, bro, until then, Vegeta was that guy during this arc. And then this is where Namek starts to get really, really interesting because shortly after this, you know, shortly after Raccoon literally violates Gohan, Krillin, and Vegeta at the same time, this is where Goku, he finally lands on Namek. And this is where we get to see just how much training Goku did, bro. He, okay, first off, he one-shotted Raccoon. Keep in mind, like I said, Raccoon literally just fodderized the fuck out of Vegeta, Krillin, and Gohan who were the main characters up to this point, he literally fodderized them, and then Goku came along, he's like, man, fuck that shit, and then he one-shots Raccoon, bro, crazy, and then right after this, he pulls up on Jason Birder, and keep in mind, these two were just in the background watching Raccoon commit child abuse on Gohan, and they were laughing about it, so, Gohan, I mean, um, Goku, he also pulls up on them, and bro, he completely fodderizes Birder, bro, Bro, Birder was talking crazy. He's like, dude, you are nothing. You cannot even touch me. I am the fastest in the universe. This, this, that, yada, yada. And then Goku, bro, he blitzes him and he one-shots him. Crazy. And then this is where Jace, he gets kind of scared. He's like, what the fuck? How the hell did he just kill Birder? He is the fastest in the universe, allegedly. And then this is when Jace runs away and Goku, he's like, all right, whatever. And so, dude... He, bro, he, he straight up just walks over to Gohan and Krillin, and he, dude, he literally reads Krillin's mind, because he asks them what's going on, and Krillin, obviously, being in, like, a state of panic, he can't talk very well, so Goku's like, alright, shut the fuck up, and so he puts his hand on, on his head, on his bald-ass head, and then he reads his mind. Goku literally never uses this again. This is just a one-time thing he uses, bro. He reads his mind. He's like, all right, thank you. And then he never does that again. It's just one of those things that he does that he never does again. I don't know. Dragon Ball logic. And you already know I could not leave out the part where Captain Ginyu takes over Goku's body. And now Goku, being controlled by Captain Ginyu, has to fight his own family. This fight was honestly kind of cool because this showed that 
Gohan has a lot of love for his dad, so he doesn't want to hurt him. And he had to learn the hard way that this isn't his dad because, you know, because obviously Captain Ginyu smacks the fuck out of him and he's like, bro, I'm not your fucking dad, nigga. Bro, I didn't pay no fucking child support. And so, yeah, bro, this tells Gohan, like, all right, he's not my dad, so I got to beat him the fuck up. And so, bro, they just proceed to put the beats on this version of Goku because keep in mind, Captain Ginyu is not Goku, so he doesn't know how to use Goku's body to its fullest extent. And when Vegeta realizes this, he has the biggest smile on his face. This dude was scheming so hard. Think about it, bro. He has a two-in-one special right now, bro. He can beat up on both Goku and Ginyu and fuck them up at the same time. So, of course, he was not going to say no to this. He beat the fuck out of Goku, bro. So badly to the point where Goku was literally... Dude, he could not walk after this. This dude literally had to be carried. So, yeah, bro, Vegeta, he <laughs> he did not say no to this free opportunity to put the beats on Goku, right? And then, of course, a little while after this, this is when we have our first encounter with Frieza. Now, I would talk about this, but, dude, Frieza deserves his own fucking video, bro. Dude, if I talk about Frieza in this video and why he's so awesome and why his fights were just so good... This video would literally be half an hour long. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to split this video up into two parts. Now, this first part focused on like the first half of Namek and my part 2, I will strictly be focusing on the second half of Namek and the fight with Frieza. So, please join me in episode 2. And with that, that will be the end of my video. If you guys like this video, please be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe because this was only part one. Like I said, bro, in my next video, in part two, we will be covering the entire Frieza part of Namek, all right? And let's just say Frieza puts hands on everybody. No one is safe from Frieza, but we'll talk about that in the next video. With that, I will see you guys later. I hope you have a good day. Peace.